Um, hello, everyone. Um, so this is our work, software implementation of Koblitz curves over quadratic fields. Um, the main motivation for this work is to combine the Koblitz curves, uh, which allows a, a, an efficient scalar multiplication through applications of the Frobenius map, uh, where, which accelerates uh, considerably the, the scalar multiplication uh, computation with the quadratic field arithmetic. Uh, this quadratic field arithmetic provides opportunities for us to exploit the instruction level parallelism uh, which is available in the current desktop architectures. So the purpose of that is to design a fast 128-bit secure constant time variable point multiplication. So the outline of this talk will be as follows. First, I will give a brief introduction on Koblitz curves of F2. Then we will see aspects of the Koblitz curves uh, over F4. And finally, uh, uh, we'll have uh, some details about our implementation in base field arithmetic, quadratic field arithmetic, our scalar multiplication, uh, summary and some results. OK, so Koblitz curves over F2. Uh, these curves are called anomalous binary curves. It's generally referred as Koblitz curves be because they were proposed by Neil Koblitz in 1991 for cryptographic use. Uh, this is the form of the curve, the Weister's form of the curve. So we have a parameter, you can choose between parameters A, 0, or 1. <coughs> well, since the introduction, they have been extensively studied because they have a structure which, which allows to substitute uh, as you've seen, point doublings, where 2p, by the cheaper operation, this tau p, where tau is the Frobenius map. And this tau is very fast because it, we just have to perform two squarings in an affine in coordinates. Like so we have to square x and y. So it's very fast compared to the doubling, point doublings operations, which requires multiplications and squares. OK, so uh, why can we perform the substitute uh, the, multipli the point doublings by uh, application of Frobenius map. So we have the curve, and let's define mu equals minus one to the power of one minus a. So this Frobenius map can be see a complex number which satisfies tau squared plus two equals mu tau. So as a result, we can multiply the points in the, this group by elements in this polynomial ring, like that, like multiple uh, uh, powers of tau. Uh, in 2000, uh, Jerome uh, Solinas presented a method to represent the scalar k in this form, in, in this form here. It's a, in a very efficient representation where L is approximately m plus a. So uh, with that way, we could uh, devise uh, very fast methods for computing scalar multiplication using Koblitz curves. So as a summary, uh, it, the covered curves allow this, this Substitution of points domains by Corbin's map, which results in efficient scalar multiplication algorithm, and provides a rigid curve generation process. You have to choose between A equals zero or one. That's the only option to choose between its parameters. Uh, in 2000, many curves were standardized by NIST, which provides different security levels. However, there's uh, two problems with these curves. Uh, find, the first one is because it's defining over a prime extension field. So it's arithmetic is somehow costly in modern desktops. And, and also, if you want to design a 120-bit secure point multiplication, you have to, you must choose an extension at 277 or 283. And this group, subgroup orders, it's more than required to, genera to generate a 120-bit secure multiplication. So we need more uh, iterations in the main loop to to implement such security level, because all of the extensions below that does not have a, a subgroup order uh, which can uh, derive a um, 128-bit secure of security. <coughs> okay, so let's see the Koblitz curves of F4. This is the form of the curve. Uh, so we have A equals zero one again. And we have to choose a, a gamma in F4, which satisfies gamma squared equals gamma plus one. Uh, now the Frobenius map is defined like this. Uh, instead of one squaring, you have to perform two consecutive squarings in the, each coordinates of an affine 
projected point, uh, unaffined point. And let's consider mu equals minus one to the power of a, the Fermi's math can be seen as a complex number which satisfies this, this equation, so we can also represent the, the, the scalar in the zeta tau for the number ring. And it can have a, a almost prime group, uh, and, but now h, uh, which uh, we can have a, a, a group of this form where h equals zero, four or six, depending on the, the parameter a, and n can be prime. So here are uh, different groups. Uh, so we wanted to, select, to implement a 128-bit secure scalar multiplication in a 64-bit architecture. So our ba base field should be at most 122 bits with three 64-bit words. So we have a multiplication of three 64-bit words. So we consider primes between M equals 127 to 121. Uh, we have this subgroup orders. The ones in red are feasible for implementing 128-bit secure scalar multiplications. Um, <clears throat> so we chose this group, uh, 4 to the power of 149, because this has a, a subgroup of 255 bits. Uh, so we have a, a, a suitable number of iterations here to, to be done in the the main loop of the scalar multiplication. No? The, the group factorized like this. Uh, so to adapt the Solinian's algorithm for representing scalar in theta tau, is, is, is there. it requires minor change to, to, to adapt uh, Solinian's algorithm to the F4 case. And, and window methods can be implemented by computing as a regular recording based on the work of Joy Tunstall. So for a given width of double B, we need to compute two to the power of two, two double B minus three points. It's a, it's a big number of points, as we see in the next slide. So if you want to, we need, we need to pre-compute, in the case of left, left to right scalar multiplication, we need to pre-compute these points here. Uh, this is not, it's not considered an optimal uh, uh, form of pre-computing the points. We design this by hand. It maybe has an optimal number. Well, uh, this is the pre-computation cost for the width of two, which is one doubling plus one full addition for the width of three. We have one doubling, four full additions, three mixed additions, and four applications of tau. And you see that it increases uh, the cost with the width. Of, it, it's a very harsh increase. For example, in the width of four, we have two, one doubling, 20 full additions, 11 mixed addition and 5,000. So we need be, to be careful when you choose the width. <coughs> okay, so as a summary, this curve is combined effectiveness of the Fermi's map with the parallelism opportunities given by the quadratic fields. Uh, also, we have a subgroup order of 255 bits, which is very nice for implementing this security level. And also, but as we see, have to be careful with the selection of the width of because the pre or post computation uh, cost can be very, very costly. And also, we have to be careful with the Frobenius map because now it's more expensive. We need six squarings in the projective coordinates. And we cannot do it by lookup tables using mood squaring because it can be, the, so in that case, the, the implementation will be vulnerable to uh, timing attacks. Okay, so let's see our implementation. Uh, our code was designed for 64-bit platforms, which is, like, where is embedded with uh, vector instructions, 128-bit uh, vector instructions, and a 64-bit careless multiplier. Uh, the benchmarking was performed in a Haswell architecture. In fact, this is 2.4 gigahertz machine. Uh, and Turbo Boost and Hyperthread technology disabled. Uh, we coded our library in C and assembly, and we compiled our codes in different systems for the sake of comparison, and with these flags, optimization flags. Okay. Uh, so first of all, let's see our base field arithmetic. So we want to implement a efficient field arithmetic, so the first thing to choose is a, a polynomial to construct our field to the power of 149, and this polynomial should allow a fast modular reduction because this is a very important operation in the field arithmetic. After doing multiplication and squaring, we need to perform a modular reduction. 
However, there's no trinomials of degree 149 irreducible over F2. And there are many irreducible pentanomials of this form. However, these pentanomials uh, make the modular reduction very costly. Uh, why? For example, for the minimum cost of doing this, it's if, if all these parameters are perfect, we need like four XORs by step, where each step is the, the, the determina determined by the difference between M and A. And in the, in the worst case, we need 12 XORs and 16 shifts per step. And we cannot, we cannot find any, 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 none of these, these pentanomials has this property here to be, uh, to be reduced in four XORs. So we, ha we have found lots of them between these two costs. So in, 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 <coughs> in short, it's very, very costly to, to perform this modular reduction using pentanomials. Uh, for that reason, we chose um, this strategy introduced by Brent, Zimmerman, and Doch in 2003 and 2005, which is called redundant trinomials. What's, what's, about, what's this idea? So we have to find a, a non-reducible trinomial, Gx, which factorizes into an irreducible polynomial Fx of the desirable degree m. So in our case, we have to find a, a terminal Gx, which factorizes into a degree 149. So we can construct our field with this polynomial Fx, but we perform throughout our algorithm uh, modulo Gx, which is this trinomial here. Uh, yes, in case of the elliptic curves, we, all of the operations uh, during the main loop is performed, uh, the, we, we reduce the point coordinates modulo Gx, and but at the end of the scalar multiplication, we return the points, the point Q in coordinates modulo Fx. So we have to perform this reduction Fx just at the end of the algorithm. Since we have a 64-bit careless multipliers, and we, have, we have to search trinomials up to degree 192, which provides us a three-word multiplication. Uh, so we, we found this trinomial, x to the power of 192 plus x to the power of 119 plus 1. So this polynomial factorized in this 69-term uh, reduced polynomial fx. So this is a very uh, uh, costly to reduce. We need to, to spend too many clock cycles reducing this polynomial, but we want to use this polynomial to reduce throughout our, our algorithm. Because this polynomial has uh, two uh, great advantages, because the difference between 192 uh, and 19 is, is more than 100, 128, which is the, uh, the size of our registers, because we are here using 128-bit vector instructions. And also because 192 mod 64 equals zero, uh, we can reduce the amount of shifts during our shift and add uh, steps. Okay. At the end, as, as we see, you have to reduce this polynomial model effects, which is this 69 term polynomial. Uh, uh, <coughs> so because of there are many terms, it's better to perform this reduction via mole and add reduction uh, instead of shift and add. And it, and it costs about 7.3 three multiplications, which is costly, but we have to do it only uh, twice in two coordinates of the final point Q equals KP. Okay, Okay. so this is our base field arithmetic, so let's uh, move to our quadratic field. As usual, we, we construct our quadratic field using this uh, trinomial, U squared plus U plus one. So our elements in this quadratic field are represented like this. So we have two terms, no? the, the linear and the constant term. So these three words are 64-bit words, C, B, and A, and the other term, the linear, C prime, B prime, and A prime, uh, which is stored in 64-bit words. So let's have three 128-bit registers, R i, R 0, 1, and 2, which store these six 64-bit uh, words. Okay, so how to store them? Well, the, well, just to remind, this is the, the, our terms for the quadratic field uh, element. So how do we store them? The usual way is to store, like doing the first register, we store the, these first two uh, words, then the second we store the last word of the, 
a, a zero term, and then we store the rest of the terms. However, uh, we have to perform uh, in the, for example, using Karatsuba uh, multiplications, uh, we have to perform uh, separately the multiplication, and we have, uh, for example, one of the results of ter res terms of the result uh, element after the multiplication will be stored in 64-bit six words. So one step of the re reduction will be like this. So we have shifts between the registers, for example. So this is very complicated reduction, which takes about uh, 24 shifts and 20 XORs, because we need two steps of this, and we have two terms to reduce. However, if we store in a method called interleaving, uh, we store each word uh, separately. For example, this, the first word comes here, and the, the first word of the other term comes there. So we interleave the, the linear and the constant terms of the quadratic field element. Because of that, uh, after the quadratic field, we have two uh, uh, elements, and we can group them together. So the multiplication now, we, we don't have any more shifts between registers because we are doing, we are supposing that we are dealing with elements of 120-bit size. So now need, need three steps, but just in, to reduce sim simultaneously two terms of this quadratic field with only nine shifts and nine XORs. We can reduce this by some of doing some optimization techniques and reduce only six, with only six shifts and nine XORs like this. And also this has a, a very uh, advantage, a very good advantage because the, it allows saving in the pre-computing phase of the Karatsuba algorithm. The problem is that we need to reorganize the registers after multiplication and squaring, but uh, this is very simple, we just take four clock cycles uh, compared to the savings in the model reduction, which now need just six shifts and nine XORs to reduce the whole uh, quadratic field uh, element. Okay, so this is the timings. Uh, having multiplications in GCC one here with 52, the squaring is about 20. Uh, the inversion here is now very expensive because we have uh, different strategies to reduce the cost of this multiplication, and this is the reduction effect. So the, the inversion should be avoided uh, more and more in the, in the binary arithmetic because it's becoming very, very expensive in, in software. This is the point arithmetic timings. So we have uh, here the addition, doubling, and tau endomorphism. You see that the endomorphism here, we are using left to right approach, so we need to perform tau endomorphism in three coordinates. Uh, which is still faster than the doubling, more than a third faster. Okay, so it's still very uh, efficient to, to perform applications of Frobenius map in Koblitz curve over F4. So we implemented here in this curve, we perform a constant time, dou v tau naf left to right and right to left tau and naf scalar multiplications. Because of the number of points we've pre-computed, we restricted our window width to two, three, and four. So this is our timings. This is the regular recording based on the joy tones out. Uh, it takes about 2,000, 3,000 clock cycles. The linear passes because it will be done in, to avoid cache attacks. Uh, and it increases with the, the width because you have more points. And this is the right to left and left to right. So right to left is more costly because you need two linear passes but in the interaction. And in, in the post-computation cost is, is more expensive than the pre-computation cost. So these two strategies were crucial for achieving our scalar multiplication timings. And uh, we have a nice subgroup size which allows us to compute uh, a 120-bit security for an optimal number of interactions compared to the Koblitz in F2. Um, the Forbin is, besides being more expensive, it's still uh, efficient and costing less than a third in the point doubling, so you can still substitute point doublings by a thousand in this, in this case. However, the drawbacks is the number of points generated by the, the regular code in the F4 case. So we need uh, too many, uh, the, linear, the linear paths become costly, and you see that in the width of four, 
um, almost 40% of our scalar modifications done pre-computing or post-computing points. So we need to restrict here in WP equals three. So this is our results. <coughs> well, here our state of the art implementation is with double with F3. Uh, we are we implementation are the fastest one uh, in COVID curves. Uh, uh, we surpassed almost 30 percent of the state of the art previous state of the art work, and uh, it's very competitive to other 120-bit secure multiplications on binary and prime curves. In Sky Lake, we, our state of the art was about 52,000 clock cycles. So that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>